Moreover, the time will come when God will judge the world in perfect justice, when every evil and every injustice will receive its due penalty. But the point is that that time has not yet come. God is long-suffering. God gives men and women time to repent. And in the meantime, we are not to become impatient and to take matters into our own hands. God says, vengeance is mine. I will judge at the right time. And in the meantime, you must simply trust in me. You must put away that vengeful spirit. You must commit everything to the, into the hands of God, the righteous judge. Thirdly, meekness is manifested by bearing patiently injuries and insults. Our Lord, of course, goes on to speak about this in chapter 5 and verse 38. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And Jesus is telling us that we are to bear patiently with insults and injury. The problem, of course, that we are up against is self, again. That we find it difficult to bear with insult. We find it difficult to bear with any kind of injury done to us because of this principle of self, this love of me. But we know that this self is to be denied. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We have examples in the Bible of men bearing patiently with insult and injury. There was the case of David when he was fleeing from Absalom, his son, and this evil man Shimei came out to curse him as he passed by. And David's men were all in favor of going after him and having his head. But G uh, David took a very different line. Abishai says, why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Please let me go and take off his head. But David says, see how my son who came from my own body seeks my life. How much more may this Benjamite let him alone? Let him curse, for so the Lord has ordered it. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will repay me with good for his cursing today. And here is David, the great king, and he endures patiently the cursing of this worthless individual and he commits it to God. He will not allow Abishai or his other men to go and to deal with the man. No, he says, let be. Maybe God will take notice and turn the curse into a blessing. And then, of course, we have the greater example of Christ, great David's greater son. And Jesus himself bore patiently with insult and injury. We see it in his dealings with Judas, knowing full well what Judas is about to do. He nevertheless is gracious towards Judas, allowing him to go out and to do his foul work. 
in the garden when they come to arrest him he refuses to allow the disciples to defend themselves with a sword before the high priests he is silent before Pilate he is uh, largely uh, silent and certainly meek in his response when Pilate says don't you know that I have power to crucify you or power to release you our Lord quietly responds you could have no power at all over me unless it were given you from above in the crucifixion itself he is led like a lamb to the slaughter like a sheep that before its shearers is dumb so he opened not his mouth Peter says when he was reviled he did not revile in return when he suffered he did not threaten but committed himself to him who judges righteously we are to be imitators of Christ we are to imitate the meekness of Christ and that means that we must put away anger and a vengeful spirit and we must bear patiently when we are called to suffer for Christ we must exhibit meekness by submission to legitimate authority Titus 3 verses 1 and 2 remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities to obey to be ready for every good work to speak evil of no one to be peaceable meek showing all humility to all men by nature we are all anarchists we do not want to be ruled by anyone it began in the Garden of Eden when our first parents threw off the rule of God they chose anarchy they chose to do their will rather than to be ruled by God and man has been resentful of authority ever since Sam 2 we have the kings and the judges the princes of the earth combining together and saying let us break their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us the bonds of God and his anointed let us be rid of God let us be rid of Christ we don't want anyone telling us what to do and that spirit of course is found everywhere in the world the spirit of rebelliousness nobody's going to tell me what I am going to do but you see God has instituted authority in the world he's instituted the authority of the state to maintain peace and justice in society he's instituted authority within the family the husband as the head Par parents ruling over their uh, children he's instituted authority in the church the authority of ministers of the ward to preach and to command obedience not obedience to the man personally but obedience in his capacity as a minister of the Word of God commanding what God commands and God has instituted these various authorities and we must be meek in obeying the authority we must submit in the family in our family life we have for example in um, first Peter chapter 3 wives be submissive to your own husbands that even if some do not obey the word they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives when they observe your chaste conduct 
accompanied by fear. Do not let your adorning be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, putting on of fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a meek and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. And here we have Peter exhorting that we are to be submissive to proper authority within the family. The wife being submissive to her husband. Children being submissive to their parents. We are likewise to submit to the authority of the state. Paul in Romans 13, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities for there's no authority except from God. The authorities that exist are appointed by God. And then he goes on to say, For this cause you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues taxes to whom taxes are due, custom to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor is due. And it is part of our Christian meekness that we recognize the authority of those who rule over us. We may not always agree with them. Perhaps frequently we may disagree with them. Yet God has instituted authority for the good of society, for peace and well-being and order and so on. And as Christians, we are to show our meekness by submission to those who rule over us. And likewise in the church, Romans 13, verse 17, Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give an account. And so, meekness, involves submission to legitimate authority. We are not to be unruly people, but those who are meek in submission to authority. When we exercise authority, we are to do that with meekness. All of us at some time or another are called to exercise authority over others. Maybe at work, maybe it's your own business, or maybe you're acting in a supervisory, managerial capacity. You have authority over others. In the home, husbands are the head of the wife. Parents are over the children. If nothing else, maybe you have a katulong and you are responsible. You are in authority. In the church, some are officers in the church. Pastors and teachers and so on. And... Everyone, in greater or lesser measure, is at some stage and in some measure called to exercise authority. Meekness means that we exercise authority in the right way. Peter exhorts elders not to lord it over the flock of God. And exercising authority by lording it over others is so commonly done. In the home, the bullying, wife-beating husband. In the state, the history of the world is full of the history of tyrants taking and exercising power in an illegitimate way. In the church... We read it even in the New Testament of Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence. And there are people who, given the smallest degree of power, will become puffed up by it and will abuse their authority over others. Biblical authority is different. Jesus says, I am meek and lowly in heart. And we, in the exercise of authority,